Good morning, everybody. This is your two-minute warning. We'll be starting uh, very, very shortly. Thank you. And uh, to download the program for today's event, just scan the QR code. It'll take you to our homepage, and then right under latest news, you'll see a link that says click here, event program. And that'll bring up the program for you. OK. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Regional Transit Leadership Council's first in-person event since 2019. Can I get it? There we go. Trevor, thank you. Uh, so I'll get the Zoom jokes out of the way. Am I on mute? No? OK. Um, so it is delightful to see everybody here in person. Uh, those of us joining on Facebook Live, I'm glad to have you here as well. Um, you know, when I look around this room, what really gets me excited is that uh, this isn't supposed to happen, right? We're not supposed to have such a great cross-section of regional leaders from throughout the area. Um, and, you know, before I go to get into the program and, and what we're going to be um, talking about today, I just wanted to, to highlight uh, and thank uh, a number of our very special guests for being here. Uh, Mayor Steve Ponto from the city of Brookfield. Thank you, Mayor, for hosting our first in-person event here. Uh, Paul Decker, Chairman of the Waukesha County Board of Supervisors and one of the founders of RTLC. Thank you, Paul. Excuse me. Uh, we have Paul Truess from United States Senator Ron Johnson's office. Thank you for being here. Uh, Waukesha Mayor uh, Sean Riley. Thank you. Uh, my good friend Joaquin El Toro, head of uh, Wisconsin Housing and Economic Development Association, WIDA. Thank you, Joaquin. Really appreciate you being here. Uh, and any other uh, elected officials that I neglected to mention, I know we have a number of common council members. Uh, Mayor McBride from the city of Wauwatosa. Thank you. Thanks, Kathy. Uh, Steve Olson, the mayor of the city of Franklin. Thank you, thank you, Mayor Olson, for being here. Uh, and we have a number of uh, county, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, common council members from, uh, from our, our communities around the region, uh, the city of Franklin, city of Wauwatosa. So if you are uh, uh, from one of those elected bodies, please raise your hand, stand up, introduce yourselves, um, and uh, we'll make sure that we, uh, uh, um, you know, we, we can meet everybody. And of course, uh, Secretary Missy Hughes from WEDC, our keynote, uh, very special guest. Thank you for being here. Uh, so today we're going to go we're going to go deep and we're going to go broad on transportation um, in our region. Um, we have a number of panel presentations. I think you'll be very excited to hear from our local uh, elected leaders uh, up here on the stage, uh, talking about regional connectivity. Uh, we're going to hear from a number of our business leaders, including M7 uh, Coles, the City of Milwaukee Department of City Development, um, to you know talk about the impact of transportation on workforce connectivity and building our region. Um, and then my favorite part, where we talk about real life examples of what's happening in transportation. Uh, really happy to have representatives from the Joseph Project here today. Uh, very excited to have um, uh, Tom Winter from Milwaukee County Transit System uh, joining us today, and uh, uh, Dan Baim also from MCTS. Thank you guys for being here today. Talk about the, uh, the positive changes with MCTS. Uh, and then a part that I think you're really going to like, uh, we are bringing in, via the magic of Zoom, all the way from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, um, a really remarkable organization called Horizons um, that has uh, really gone in on the transportation uh, component of connecting people to jobs uh, and has scaled up very, very rapidly and is now serving uh, thousands of people um, in Cedar Rapids, Iowa and their surrounding uh, region with, with workforce connectivity. Uh, so that's our program today. And um, you know, I just want to thank um, our sponsors, of course, uh, HNTB, thank you HNTB for your sponsorship, uh, and Brooks Communications, um, who is handling uh, you know our event here today, um, as uh, our and uh, also as a sponsor. Um, the major funders of the RTLC. Without you guys, we would not be here doing what we're doing. 
So top of the bill, if we have Greater Milwaukee Foundation, Bader Philanthropies, Mandel Group, uh, HNTB, Grafe, M7, CARW, the City of Wauwatosa, Milwaukee Regional Medical Center. Thank you for all of our sponsors that make what we're doing here with the RTLC uh, possible. Uh, so very briefly, what is the RTLC? What do we do? Um, you know, we are a voice, we are a platform, and we're a convener. We're a voice for a forward-looking uh, transportation system in our region. Uh, we're a platform. We bring thought leaders uh, together um, as a venue um, to really advance uh, innovative and forward-thinking, efficient multimodal transportation. And most importantly, we're a convener. Uh, and, you know, that's what events like this are all about, right? We convene. Uh, but we don't just convene and meet and talk. We convene um, to do. And, you know, really, this is in the model of collective impact, right? And if you're familiar with the collective impact concept, we all have a role to play. We all have a lever that we can pull. Uh, but if we're rowing in the same direction towards a common goal, we can achieve a lot more together than we can uh, individually. Uh, so our role is to articulate that vision, convene the leaders, bring in the necessary expertise where, where necessary, and break down silos. Um, that's the most important part, I think, um, in, in really uh, so many, so many uh, activities and you know, making Milwaukee and our region uh, a better place, is breaking down those silos that too often separate us. Uh, so what do we believe? What are our core principles? Well, we believe first and foremost that we can fix this. Um, our spatial mismatch, the mismatch between people looking for jobs and where the jobs are located. Uh, you know, I think oftentimes we think that it's an unsolvable problem. Um, but we, you know, we take a 30,000 foot look at it and say, well, you know, it's only 10 miles. I think we can, we can solve this. And that's, you know, really, especially towards the second half of our program, we'll be um, going more deep on. Uh, we have to make our region more attractive to new talent. Um, you know, with the census 2020 uh, came out and, you know, there was a, it was a mixed bag. Some of us in the region did not so good, others of us a little bit better. Uh, but I was just talking earlier, um, you know, someone in the audience around, you know, how when I was a kid, you know, Minneapolis was kind of our peer city. People said, oh yeah, Milwaukee, Minneapolis, very similar. Uh, but I think, you know, we, we'd have to say that um, they've advanced beyond us. Um, Columbus, Ohio, Indianapolis, a lot of our cities, uh, peer cities that are now our peers, uh, maybe were not peers before. So, you know, to really grow the city, um, you know, it has to, uh, you know, become more attractive. But I think our, our, our biggest guiding principle is that it's not an either or proposition. And, you know, I think oftentimes we have a zero sum mindset in our region, um, you know, where, well, if we do one thing, we can't do the other. Well, we believe that we can do both. We can do uh, things that go together hand in hand. Uh, we can have a more inclusive and equitable region and have a region that's growing uh, and economically vibrant. In fact, they go hand in hand. Uh, we can protect the environment and have uh, Milwaukee and our region be a great place to do business. They go hand in hand. Um, and we can serve more people with better multimodal transportation and have it be efficient, cost effective, meet people's 21st century needs. So it's not either or, it's not one uh, you know, initiative over another. Uh, it's really about working together uh, to find those synergies. So very briefly, our initiatives, uh, and you probably have seen in the, you know, the news uh, uh, this past summer, you know, really happy to announce our last mile project, funded by WEDC and the United Way of Greater Milwaukee, uh, led by our project partners, HNTB, happy to have you guys here today, and our partners at Sewer PAC, the Southeast Wisconsin Regional Planning Commission. Uh, so this is really looking at and um, leaning into our role as a convener uh, to say, all right, we have this mismatch between jobs and job seekers. How do we connect those dots uh, with um, you know, transportation services that meet people's needs uh, where they are? Learn from national examples uh, and, and really drill down to what's going to work to move the largest number of people. Uh, our uh, last mile project, of course, funded by the United Way and WEDC, other funders, Grafe, Milwaukee, Seven, Mandel Group, and the city of Franklin. So thank you for your belief in that work uh, and supporting that work. Uh, our other, other initiatives uh, include uh, task forces. Um, and in fact, the last mile project came out of a task force where we said, uh, well, let's bring leaders together in the room as a convener 
and say, what can we work on together? Um, so that's really the backbone of our work at the RTLC is bringing these leaders together in, in the form of task forces, uh, broken out by regions or, or by, by geographies within the region, Milwaukee, Waukesha County, uh, north, south, Milwaukee to, um, to Racine. Um, and uh, you know, we also, uh, this uh, past spring, did a virtual series called Intersections, taking uh, lemons and turning them into lemonade. We were able to, uh, in the Zoom era, uh, go virtual with our intersection series and serve, and reached about 100 people, uh, you know, with um, uh, in, in expanding the conversation um, and advocacy. We've been actively involved uh, in the 94 uh, corridor project. Happy to serve on the transit transportation uh, transit advisory council put together uh, by Wisconsin DOT. All right, so let's talk about some wins, right? When I took this uh, position on. Uh, any, uh, you know, I'm, I'm assuming you guys are all baseball fans, uh, but uh, when I when I took this position on, I kind of felt we were the 2005 Brewers, right? We were looking for some wins. And if you guys remember, 2005 was the year that they finished 500, and we were all really excited that we had a team that wasn't losing. Um, and you know, it, this space of multimodal transportation, yes, it's been a tough decade. It's been a tough couple of decades. We've seen uh, tremendous uh, you know, reductions in ridership, funding challenges. All of those things are very, very real. Uh, but there's a couple of wins that I want to highlight here um, that are extremely important. And um, you know, MCTS can talk about a few of these, or at least one of these later. Uh, but the bus rapid transit uh, link between downtown Milwaukee uh, and the Milwaukee, Medical, uh, uh, Milwaukee Regional Medical Center. Uh, you know, this is not going to be your your uncle's bus system, um, and you know, I'll admit that I'm a transit geek, but it's passing right in front of my house. I see the platforms being built, fully electric buses, uh, but the real deal breaker is frequency. During peak hours, you'll have 10 minute frequency on this bus rapid transit route. Um, so that means that for me and my wife, when we use this uh, service to get downtown, we won't even have to look at a schedule. We'll just walk out our front door and one's going to be coming along uh, in a jiffy. Um, so that's, that, that's a tremendous step forward for transit in our region. Uh, you know, bus rapid transit has caught on in Latin America, Asia, and it's just starting to come uh, you know, to the fore in the United States. So it's, it's uh, important for us, for Milwaukee, to be at that vanguard. And then another big win um, that was recently announced by the National Science Foundation, and you'll be hearing much more about this, the Civic Innovation Challenge. So the National Science Foundation issued a, uh, a request for uh, proposals for a major grant to uh, transit entities and academic institutions throughout the United States. The first phase was $50,000 to do the planning. The second phase is a million dollars to implement what came out of the plan. Uh, so our partners at UW-Milwaukee and Sewer Pack uh, applied for the grant. This was in the summer of 2020. The Regional Transit Leadership Council supported that work in the grant writing process, uh, connected the dots with a number of the uh, businesses uh, in, the, in the area served, especially Menominee Falls, and uh, we got the $50,000 planning grant. So the uh, UWM then led the research study, uh, sent it off to NSF, crossed our fingers, and just found out a couple of weeks ago that we got the million dollar planning grant. So I think that's worthy of a round of applause. And I especially want to recognize uh, Professor Ivy Hu from the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee who led that uh, research project and successfully landed um, this game-changing grant, uh, and our partners at Sewer Pack. I know Jennifer is here from Sewer Pack, uh, who have led this effort. Uh, now, we are a project partner, as is Waukesha County Business Alliance, the Waukesha, Ozaki, and Washington County uh, Workforce um, uh, Investment Board, and Employ Milwaukee. So this is a big win for our region, and um, you know details forthcoming. You will be hearing more about this uh, uh, soon.